What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. So, continuing on episode 7 of the walkthrough, we are starting at the Vestige of the Pale Butcher. And the very, very first thing we're going to do here... Ooh, a lantern. Look at that. Uh, but what I'm going to actually do is get this shortcut. So, it's pretty easy. We're just going to pop Umbo here. Drop on down. Turn around the corner. And kick down the plank. Nice shortcut, right? Uh, so, with that... Oh, you're the guy I gotta kill. It's wonderful, and it looks like you're having trouble, uh, with your collision. Makes things easy. Beautiful. Some nice plucked eyeballs. Uh, but so kill that guy. Another one over here we'll kill. We're gonna exit Umbral in just a little bit here, so don't feel too worried. Uh, we're gonna get the small Delirium Fragments. Ahead is an exit. Should grab them now. And there should be a ring. There we go, Bloodbane Ring. Uh, this one's actually pretty cool. If you are using poison, this simultaneously causes bleed buildup, which is pretty nice. So, might be worth considering. But what we're going to do is right when we get to the split here, we're going to make a left. After making that left and rolling through some stuff, where is it at? It moves. It's, it moves around a little bit, so we gotta we gotta hunt down its location. There it is. So this can be in a couple different spots, uh, but this is the the first mimic that you're going to encounter in the game. Now, mimics in this game you can identify because you'll notice that the tail on the loot it wavers. So when you see this, even though you don't see anything, if you do a soul flay, it's going to pull this thing out and you'll be able to get a vestige moth and usually uh, loot paws and a couple other things off of it. So for now at least, this is going to be uh, a couple, couple different things here. This is just that little bridge that we were, we were just at. There's a couple different loots we want to get though. And this is basically the, the back side of the fen. So I'm going to pick up the poison salts. Kick down this. I remember there being some something in the umbral that I wanted to kill. Might be mixing up my umbral areas. There's another umbral exit in just a little bit, so it's not a huge concern. But so this is the little fairy that we killed earlier. We got a umbral eye from that. So just to give you an idea of where we're at, you can see how this all paths around. So this is just the, the back side of the fen, basically. Uh, but there is more to this place besides just that little backside that we're looking at. We're gonna take this path around. There should be some enemies that we need to kill that are up this ladder, including a mage that wants to shoot stuff at us from range. Run on over and push this ladder down first. That gives us another shortcut. Got the poison resistance bomb. this ladder. There's going to be a bunch of enemies that are fighting up ahead. Uh, you can just kind of head on in and, and just really attack whatever you can. There's a chest up ahead that we want, but don't push your way into where you're in trouble. I'll let them do the majority of the fighting. A 
go. After getting through that, we'll pick up the Pendant of Burden. It's an interesting pendant focusing around status effects, so very uh, situational, but on the right build it can be pretty potent. And we'll roll down. Let's do a quick vacuum up for any souls that are loose. I'm going to follow this around here. And I'll pick us up the precision arrows. And then the rest of this is just a rooftop that I'll, I'll loop back around. So this is the whole, the back side of the fen, all that stuff that, uh, that we saw previously but we weren't able to do anything with. And we want to go down. And we'll just make our way back now. Uh, keep in mind, even though we defeated the Red Reaper, he will respawn. So, you know, it isn't like a one and done. He's never going to bother you again. So we're going to go through here. This is basically going to take us back to our... Uh, back to our spot. Back to the, the thing we got at the start. There are a couple other enemies that we want to kill. I think we didn't go far enough. Here we go. I know this area can seem a bit disorienting, uh, but if you get lost at all, there's the vestige. It's quite literally just right across from the vestige. So, like, there's the shortcut we kicked down. We can just roll in here and then start progressing. Uh, and we're going to go back to the vestige in just a moment. But there are a couple other things we want to get here. So, we pick up the panoptic ring. And the rest of these enemies are pretty inconsequential. Uh, relatively easy. Even though I'm poisoned, I'm just going to keep going. Not really worried about it. The Brio Stone Trios, those are quite nice. Uh, they're very strong heal over time. I would suggest primarily saving them for later. Get the ammunition cluster, and then I believe that is it. From here, go ahead and rest up. Rest up, grab a level if you have enough. Uh, let's see, we turn back and take path in the Mimikwas, Roly Polies, Panaptic Ring and Tree, healing items, stuff near the boxes. Rest if needed, then cross the bridge we kick down. So we're gonna go ahead and upgrade. Probably I'll get my main stat up to 30. Uh, in terms of leveling at this point, so we've already hit our early soft caps on endurance and vitality. To be honest, endurance, you might not ever need more than 20. On my strength build, I went up to 25, uh, but beyond that, it just it didn't really feel necessary for me. Vitality, we are going to take that all the way up to, uh, to 40 at least. And that's because right now we have 595. Getting up to 40 will put us close to around 800. So a nice solid little boost there. Um, but right now, our, our biggest thing is really just our damage. So once our damage is high enough to where we're feeling really good about it, we're going to start focusing on vitality again. If you really want more endurance, maybe five more points. But like I said, not a huge concern. Uh, but from here, I'm just going to proceed along. Another, another revenge. I ain't going all the way. It's probably something that's real far. It's not my problem. Uh, so just go through here. We'll enter Fitzroy's Gorge. Um, now, it might actually be worth... There's an Umbral Gate up ahead that we need to cross and a Gargoyle that's right by it. So what we're actually going to do is just go Umbral now. And then you can see him up top. So now that he's spotted us, he's going to come down. And these enemies try to, they basically want to dive bomb you and get in damage. They're really annoying to deal with. Uh, so, you know, I'll be obviously calling out the locations for them, but definitely something to be, uh, be a bit cautious of. Got some fire dogs we gotta kill. Looks like I get instant smite on these enemies. That's beautiful. That's the, the lightning bolt you see coming down. That's the, the smite effect.
pick up piercing light. There's a couple enemies here that we're gonna kill. I say a couple, it's like a whole ass horde. Alright, now right up ahead there, we're actually going to get a, a rest spot, but we're going to continue along this path real fast. Uh, there's some more stuff we can get, and we can talk to Damaros up ahead. So let's go on up. You don't have to uh, talk to her, but you might as well. Alright, so now that we've exhausted her dialogue... I'm gonna grab this right here. I, I would suggest you plant a seedling here. There's a, a mini boss up ahead that may give you a little bit of challenge, so it's probably worth uh, planting one. Let's see how, just how much damage am I getting. Holy enchanted on this. Very nice. Initially, I had planned this playthrough being like a one handed sword and a shield, but dual wield is pretty damn nice. Though I will say, we are at a, a point in the game where we could we could do that now. We could transition, and, and uh, now that we have our, our main one hander with the Pieta sword, we could focus on the shield. Um, let's go ahead and get a level real fast. Might as well. No point carrying around all that extra experience. Alright. So we can just run up ahead here. Ignore the stuff that's coming after us. And this is another area where enemies are fighting, so we're not going to get a whole lot for, for killing these guys. So instead, you're just going to run past. Not even really worry about them. And once you get in here, we have our boss with Crimson Rector Percival. Now to talk about Percy for just a little bit here, um, this guy is basically just a holy knight. This is going to become a unique enemy later, and in fact a lot of these enemies that we fight now, these mini bosses, turn and become just common enemies later in the game. Uh, so a couple things here, when he gets to about 50% he's going to start spamming heals. There are Umbral Parasites all over that we can pop that'll help to interrupt him and shut down his holy bullshit. Uh, besides that, he'll make little clones of himself that he'll send out and, and try to target. But honestly, as long as you just stay aggro on this enemy, he really shouldn't be that hard. So even now, if I pop one... Maybe, maybe. There's his little clones. Ooh, that hurt. You can see that's taken away his holy aura. Stop that shit. So it can be a little annoying, but not that bad. Not that bad. Uh, if you want, you can finish off the, the Rogar boys who are now insistent on coming through.
definitely need to get Pieta's spell. I have a feeling Pieta's spell does AoE damage, so I think we will grab that before a second sword. Uh, but after killing him... Do a little vacuuming. I would not suggest planting a seed here. The seed we already planted is in a, a much superior spot. Uh, over here, we'll gain access to the Bloodlust, which is a really solid one-hander. And we have some regular Delirium Nuggets. Uh, to look at Bloodlust real fast, I'm debating if I want to level up to use this. This could work out very well. Uh, where are you, my dear? There it is. So I would need 13 Agility and 13 Inferno. So probably not for this build, uh, but this has partial fire damage on it. It's going to do bleed buildup and burn buildup. So very, very solid for a dual wheel build. Um, burn is, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned previously, but burn is just going to be straight damage over time. It's just going to slowly tick on the enemy and cause damage to them. Whereas bleed is going to cause a burst of damage and then he, any subsequent hits that deliver physical damage will hit harder as well. So very solid weapon for like an agility oriented build. Probably not the play for me, uh, but cool weapon nonetheless. We're back at Skyrest. We're actually back at Pilgrim's Perch, but I'll show you all in a second. Grab those nuggets. And if we open that gate up, you can see where we're at now. So this is back near the start before we uh, before we really got going in the zone. If we take that, that's the path that gets us to uh, the, the lower section of Skyrest. But but now we're gonna continue along. We got, how are we looking on time? 16 minutes, perfect. We got another mini boss that we're going to clap the cheeks of. Uh, we gotta get through Fitzroy's and we also reach a new shrine. I think we're, I think we're making good time here. All right, so back at the seedling we grabbed earlier. Go upgrade our character again. So actually, let me see. Do I have enough for Pieta's spell? I believe it was 10. I have seven, okay. I'll get that soon though. I don't remember, I think it was 30 Radiance, but I'm gonna keep pumping that for now. It's gonna help my weapon. It's gonna help my catalyst. Um, we are going to head on out. There may be some dogs that come from behind. Just be aware of that. You are a short sword, right? I wonder why I'm not getting the... My moveset is slightly modified. So we need to get that, but there are a couple other enemies that I want to... ...take out first. Namely, back over there. So, get far enough to where you can get a lock on. Then we can take this out. I am too far. I'm gonna have to do this the hard way, maybe. There we go. So if you're on fire, you can actually roll to put the fire out. Just make sure you don't like roll off a ledge or anything. Pop one of these. Pop a heal. Dumb coward. 
dead already. If anything, I'm merely helping you with your well-earned rest. A little, little uh, stigma there showing that Andreas is basically a dick and you can't trust him. I'll run this way, there's a dog around the corner here. Ammunition satchel from you. Delirium fragments. You can see another uh, a gargoyle waiting up top there. And up ahead, we got a thing we need to pop. The instances like this are a little bit weird because the uh, the umbral thing still exists for that enemy. Even though we can see through it, and the gargoyle can get through it, that dog, in the, in the dog's world, there's a gate right here. So it's a little, a little goofy at times. Uh, but after getting them, we have another archer who are in a much better position to fight than the last one. Still took some unfortunate damage there, but we're okay. see, can I get this? Yeah, there's no way to target it from over here. we we'll just proceed up through. This is, uh, Fitzroy's Gorge. That one's real. There is a Mimic coming up. We're gonna exit out. Kill some more enemies. Out of my healing here. We have another spot we're gonna be putting down a thing. Just a second here. Okay, there's Fitzroy's sword. And there should be another mimic around here. I'm not seeing him right now, so I wonder where he moved to. Sneaky mimics. Well, anyway, there is typically a loot that's right here, but like I said, mimic locations can move. Uh, so just be aware, there's a Mimic around here, and it's not where it should be right now. Probably up ahead. I don't know. Uh, either way, we're going to want to go back into Umbo here. There's a, another Gargoyle, and his whole plan is to ambush you as you're crossing this bridge, causing you to fall down and die. Take him out. Go on and cross the bridge. And then after that, kill these guys. There's the mimic. Yeah, I've never seen him come all the way over here. They're, they're sneaky, man. The fact that they move location, too, I really like that. Uh, but hop on over here. We're going to talk to him in just a second. First, we are going to go down. Pick up the cracked rune tablet. That's the first of the three rune tablets. This is going to allow us to make some, some big upgrades to our weapon. We're going to raise that. And we can go ahead and upgrade again and then rest. I think we can get, yeah, if I'm, if I'm moving quick, I can get through all this this episode. Uh, but anyway, go on and I'll do. talk to Justin now here, just it, burn through his dialogue. I'll talk evil. <laughs> Melchior, he's a fave, an evil wizard. No, I fell down when I won't, and he'd never, but not to work. Right, after talking to him, go back up. And I find this to be... Uh, a little bit of an easier way to to go through this next part here. Oh, 
Oh god. Not what I wanted, but... Push on ahead. You don't need to, but if you want, uh, we can pull down a little a platform here. That'll just give us a bridge that we can cross anytime we're in Umbral, but like I said, you don't need to have that very much a... Uh, Optional type thing here. Here we get some nuggets. And if we had jumped down uh, after the rune, it would have been right here, just to give an idea of where we're at and how fast you get back over here if you die. Just right there. But we're gonna go up ahead. I don't remember if there's an umbral exit here. There should be. No, there is not. Hmm. Well then, this is, we might die here because we don't have an umbral exit, but um, I'll try my best. We'll see how it goes. So to talk about this boss up next is the Ruiner. A couple things to look out for. Uh, he's going to charge us right at the start. He is going to put down a large totem. If you see the totem, make sure to attack it. It's going to buff him. He does that. It's just like an axe slam. He'll do this thing where he stops on the ground and then fire will basically uh, just erupt underneath you. He also has a like shield charge thing where he'll buff his shield. And then afterwards he'll do like a, a shield blast to you. If you're using this build, you're going to body him because he is considered like a fiery type enemy and we are working with Holy, so we obviously just did a ton of damage, way more than I expected we would. Uh, but after killing him, it's okay that we're in Umbral, we need to be in Umbral. So run ahead and then right up here we have a seal, go ahead and pop that. It's going to go wee, wee. I do not think it's worth uh, utilizing a, a vestige seed here. Before we go over there, we're going to buff up our weapon. This area is... it's basic enemies, but it's a lot of basic enemies. Like, an army of withered, basically. After taking them out, pop this, and then pull the bridge towards us. And go up from here. There's going to be a Reaper up ahead, since we're in Umbral, but we can pretty much just ignore him. Uh, what we're going to actually do is run it and get the shortcut as fast as possible. And actually, the Reaper won't be an issue because we are out of Umbral. Hello. Go. Run over this way. Grab some goodies. Probably have enough of those to get another upgrade into my sword. That's the bridge where we fought Ruiner. 
Now we're just gonna run on ahead. There's a couple enemies here. You can fight them if you want. But we're also uh, we're really, really close to a vestige. So if it looks like you're gonna die at all, just run through. Vestige of Betrayed Eliard. So we'll rest. And now we are all the way at the Invader Shrine. Now similar to the Co-op Shrine back at the main base, this is considered the Invader Shrine. We can use the Severed Hands to purchase tanks. Uh, we can also get some other stuff as the tiers unlock. These tiers are based on online progress of everybody. So basically, after 714,150 hands have been submitted from everybody playing the game, those higher tiers will be unlocked. Over here, though, we have Damaros, so we can talk to her. Rogar, and I don't Rogar. It's his way, as long as you're... Uh, keep in mind, we are going to need to have all throwables and all spells for trophies. So if you didn't buy that previously, just get it now so you have access to it ahead and pick up the charred fingers uh, now the thing with with Damaros is we need her for our ending if you light any beacons she's gone so no lighting beacons we need her here as part of our, our goal to get the uh, the hidden ending of the game and uh, yeah so just make sure we stay keep access to her but we're gonna pick up our radiance level up and then this is exactly where we are going to wrap things up. So make sure to stay tuned. In the next episode, we are going to be fighting our way through the remainder of Fitzroy's Gorge, and that is going to get us into Lower Calrath, which is where things start heating up. So stay tuned, and I'll catch you all then.